The purpose of the site safety plan is to establish requirements for protecting the health and safety of responders during all activities conducted at an incident. It contains safety information, instructions, and procedures. A site safety plan must be prepared and reviewed by qualified personnel for each hazardous substance response. Before operations at an incident's commence, safety requirements must be written, conspicuously posted or distributed to all response personnel and discussed with them. The safety plan must be periodically reviewed to keep it current and technically correct. In non-emergency situations such as long-term remedial action at abandoned hazardous waste sites, safety plans are developed simultaneously with the general work plan. Workers can become familiar with the plan before site activities begin. Emergency response generally requires verbal safety instructions and reliance on existing standard operating procedures until, when time permits, a plan can be written. The plan must contain safety requirements for routine but hazardous response activities and also for unexpected site emergencies. The plan's scope, detail, and length is based on information available about the incident, time available to prepare a site-specific plan, and reasons for responding. Three general categories of response exist. Emergencies, incident characterizations, and remedial actions. Considerations for personnel safety are generic and independent of the response category. However, in scope, detail, and length, safety requirements and plans vary considerably. These variations are determined by the reason for responding or category of response, information available, and the severity of the incident with consideration for dangers to the responder. Emergencies. Situation. Emergencies generally require prompt action to prevent or reduce undesired effects. Immediate hazards of fire, explosion, and release of toxic vapors or gases are of prime concern. Emergencies vary greatly in respect to types and quantities of material, numbers of responders, type of work required, population affected, and other factors. Emergencies last from a few hours to a few days. Effects on plan. In emergency, time is not available to write lengthy and detailed safety plans. Responding organizations must rely on their existing written standard operating safety procedures or a generic plan and verbal safety instructions adapted to meet site-specific conditions. Since heavy reliance is placed on verbal safety instructions, an effective system to keep all responders informed must be established. Whenever possible, these incident-specific instructions should be written Incident characterization. Situation. In non-emergency responses, such as preliminary inspections at abandoned waste sites or more comprehensive waste site investigations, the objective is to determine and characterize the chemicals and hazards involved, the extent of the contamination, and risks to people and the environment. Initial or preliminary inspections generally require one to two days. Complete investigations may last over a longer period of time. Effects on plan. Sufficient time is available to write safety plans. In scope and detail, plans tend to be brief containing safety requirements for a specific on-site work relevant to collecting data. As information is developed through additional investigations, the safety plan is modified and, if necessary, more detailed and specific requirements added. Remedial actions. Situation. Remedial actions are cleanups which last over a long period of time. They commence after more immediate problems at an emergency have been controlled, or they involve the mitigation of hazards and restoration of abandoned hazardous waste sites. Remedial actions may require months to years to completely accomplish. Effects on plan. Since ample time is available before work commences, the site safety plan tends to be comprehensive and detailed. From prior investigations, much detail may be known about the materials or hazards at the site and the extent of the contamination. Site safety plan creation. To construct the plan, as much information as possible should be gathered about the anticipated incident. This would include, but not limited to, incident location and name, site description, site control procedures, chemicals and quantities involved, 
hazards associated with each chemical, behavior and dispersion of material involved, types of containers, storage or transportation methods, physical hazards, prevailing weather condition and forecast, surrounding populations and land use, ecologically sensitive areas, facility records, preliminary assessment reports, off-site surveys, topographic and hydrologic information. This information provides a basis for developing a site-specific safety plan. Information is needed about the chemicals and hazards involved, movement of material on and off the site, and potential contact with responders or the public. The plan is tailored to the conditions imposed by the incident and to its environmental setting. As additional information becomes available, the safety plan is modified to protect against the hazards discerned and to provide for site emergencies that may occur. Site control issues. A site control plan for protecting workers, which is part of the site safety and health program, should be developed during the planning stages of a hazardous waste operation. The program should be modified as necessary as new information becomes available. Purpose. In general, the purpose of a site control program is to minimize potential contamination of workers, protect the public from the site's hazards, protect the environment from the spread of contamination. Routine operations. Routine operations are those activities required when responding to either an emergency or a remedial action at a hazardous waste site. These activities may involve a high degree of risk, but must be performed at all incident responses. All of the following elements must be included in the site safety plan for routine operations. Describe the known hazards and evaluate the risks associated with the incident and with each activity conducted. List key personnel and alternates responsible for site safety, response operations, and for protection of the public. Describe personal protective equipment and clothing to be worn by personnel. Designate work areas. Establish procedures to control site access. Describe procedures to control site access. Establish site emergency procedures. Address emergency medical care for injuries and toxicological problems. Describe requirements for an environmental surveillance program. Specify any routine and special training required for responders. Establish procedures for protecting workers from weather-related problems. On-site emergencies. The plan must address site emergencies. Site emergencies are occurrences that require immediate action to prevent additional problems or harm to responders, the public, property, or the environment. Unpredictable events such as fire, chemical exposure, or physical injury may occur and must be anticipated. The plan must contain contingencies for managing them, and the plan must be written. Address emergency medical care. Determine the location of the nearest medical or emergency care facility. Find out if they are equipped to handle chemical exposure cases. Make arrangements to transport, admit, and treat injured or exposed workers. Post the name of the medical or emergency care facility along with its phone number, location, travel time, and directions. Determine the local physician's office location, travel directions, availability, and phone number. Post the physician's phone number if other medical care is not available. Determine the nearest ambulance service and post the telephone number. List responding organizations' physicians, safety officers, or toxicologists' names and telephone numbers. Also include the nearest poison control center phone number. Maintain accurate records on any exposure or potential exposure of site workers during routine operations and emergencies. Duties. Advise workers of their duties during an emergency. In particular, it is imperative that the site safety officers stand by rescue personnel, decontamination workers, and emergency medical technicians practice emergency procedures. Decontamination. Incorporate into the plan procedures for the decontamination of injured workers and for the transport vehicles, transport personnel, and medical care facilities. Whenever feasible, these procedures should be discussed with appropriate medical personnel in advance of operations. Evacuation. 
established procedures in cooperation with local and state officials for evacuating residents who live near the site. Implementation of the Site Safety Plan The Site Safety Plan must be written to avoid misinterpretation, ambiguity, and the mistakes that verbal orders sometimes cause. Once the Site Safety Plan is implemented, it should be periodically examined and modified to reflect any changes in site work and conditions. All agencies and organizations which have an active role at the incident must be familiar with the plan. The plan should be written in coordination with the organizations involved. Lead personnel from these organizations should sign the plan to signify that they agree with it and will follow its provisions. All personnel involved at the site must be familiar with the safety plan or the parts that pertain to their specific activities. It is the responsibility of personnel involved at the site as workers or visitors to comply with the requirements of the plan. Responsibilities Responsibilities Employer Responsible for directing emergency response operations relating to soil sampling activities according to the Corporate Health and Safety Plan. Provides the necessary facilities, equipment, and site access identified in the Site Safety Plan. Incurs costs to implement the Site Safety Plan. Provides permission for site access and coordinates activities with appropriate personnel. Provides adequate time resources to conduct soil sampling activities safely. Has the authority to remove any person who employs unsafe work practices. Controls the decontamination of all equipment, personal protective equipment, and samples from the contaminated areas in conjunction with the engineering and drilling firms. Responsible for transportation and disposal of all contaminated materials such as wash water and solids. Knows and uses emergency procedures, evacuation routes, and the telephone numbers of the ambulance, local hospital, poison control center, fire department, and police department conducts continuous inspections to determine compliance with the site safety plan, controls entry and exit at the access points into the disturbance or exclusion zone. Additional responsibilities include engineering, drilling company, consulting firm, and the site safety officer. Overall, the site safety plans are continually being updated and requires maximum coordination of everyone involved. The plan must also be practiced to make sure it will work in an emergency. Each organization is responsible for making detailed emergency contingency plans for response to potential hazardous material incidents. These plans must be comprehensive and cannot simply be a paper exercise. Once the plan is adopted, training, training, and more training is required. Without first testing your plan in the training phase, how will you know it will be effective when the time comes to put it into action? Planning is ongoing. It changes as the conditions and situations change. It begins on paper, but an effective emergency response plan is one that has been tested and found to have defects. Then more planning is completed to correct the deficiencies, then tested again with more planning after that. An effective emergency contingency plan is necessary, it's required, and it's critical in the event of an incident requiring emergency responses. If you take contingency planning serious, it'll take care of you in the event of an emergency. Thank you.